Hello everyone, my name is Rob and in this video tutorial I will show you how you can remove objects from your videos with just a few simple clicks. With the latest update to Adobe After Effects because it just made it way more easier than ever before. So you will see how you can remove objects, lens dust, cars or even persons walking around in your video with just a few simple clicks. So I'm so excited, I can't wait to show you. So let's get rolling with the intro and get to it. Here we are in the latest version of Adobe After Effects and I have loaded up a clip that we shot for a project here in our beautiful city of Munich and it features the new town hall on the Marienplatz and of course as with many public spaces in Germany you have tons of shields and, and street signs and posts and everything is forbidden and verboten and it's just a mess so let's get rid of these and also a couple of helmets are whizzing through probably bicycle riders or something like that so uh, the shot is pretty as is but it would be even prettier if you could get rid of these elements here so how can we do this well to be able to do that you have to go to window and open up content aware fill and this will bring up a brand new panel that allows you to actually use this new feature and it features a big image area that is the fill target that will show you what will be filled. It will also give you a slider control that you can use to expand the alpha selection and then you can choose between three fill methods. First one is object, second is surface and the third one is edge blend. And then of course you can also choose between anti-duration or the work area and then you can do a reference frame, I'll talk about that later. And of course you can trigger the whole process by clicking on generate fill layer. But how can you define on what needs to get removed? So to remove these areas, all you have to do is set up a mask. So I've already set up a few masks here. In particular, I have selected the street signs as well as both of these helmets. And you will notice that the masks are set to none. So obviously all the masks have to be set to subtract. And as soon as I click that, obviously these areas will be transparent. And right away you can see here in the content aware fill area the areas that will be filled or actually cut out. So if we scrub along you will also see that as soon as the other masks are coming into the frame, for example this one, this will also show up here. So it's a live preview of the holes that will be filled with content aware fill. So if you look at the mask it's just really rough masks. Um, of course you can draw these masks and use the track mask feature here if you want but the masks are just roughly animated just to make sure that all the areas that need to be replaced and filled are covered up during the entirety of the workspace. Of course you can do this in several ways um, you can also use the track mask feature if you want or you can just animate them so whatever works best and again this is just a rough mask so in order to get started you have to select the fill method uh, object in this case and I click on generate fill layer. So this will analyze the clip now and it's it's pretty fast it's uh, also a 50 fps clip so it's quite a few frames it has to analyze but uh, actually this would be a great time for a quick coffee. So now it's rendering the frames after it analyzed the clip and this will create an image sequence that will be placed on top of our clip. You can see the image sequence right here. It's a PNG sequence and uh, let's check it out. That looks pretty, pretty sweet. The way Content Aware Fill works is it analyzes the frames and looks for what is before and after and then we'll blend it so that it actually everything looks nice and smooth. It's not always 100% perfect, but if you don't look at this area specifically, if you're not told to look at this area this would work totally and also you know if you want to have like a title sequence or something and everything that is obstructing the image this works just really really well. Let's also quickly check out how the other methods would look like so again let me just quickly create a generate fill layer again and this will analyze the clip again and will create a surface method. Now it's done and you can already see that it's uh, more like abstract art instead of the, uh, the actual goal that we had. It looks quite interesting though. Um, but what it does, it will actually use the pixels and will blend everything together and not actually looking at the objects, but more 
more like creating a texture like a sticker and it's also not really moving so it's not really the desired method um, to to approach this so let's look at the third option which is edge blend and again just create a generate fill layer and um, with this method it's much much faster because what it will do is it will just blend the pixels from the corners of the hole and um, while we wait for it to be rendered you will see that everything will be created here as a png sequence so it creates a new folder and in that new folder you will see that we'll create all the PNG files that are sitting there. So this will not slow down your system because it's just showing the image sequence above your footage. So let me quickly show you this result. So this is also not suited so well for this particular clip. It's, it's better suited for something where there is like even surfaces like paper or untextured objects. So uh, let's go back and uh, quickly review the, uh, the final result. And let's jump to the next example. So here we have another example. Uh, this is a clip featuring a guy that looks very similar to yours truly, sitting at a desk in a cafe, looking important, doing even more important work on a very important and expensive computer that has a certain fruit brand um, on the top. And of course, this has to be removed. This is a typical scenario for for films and uh, productions where they say no other brands have to be shown but also if you let's say want to sell this clip on uh, Adobe stock for example then you have to remove uh, these type of logos so uh, you might think that maybe you can track this and um, overlay it so I've done that I, I track this little um, little logo here and also applied a patch on top of that and as as, as yeah it doesn't look too good I mean you have to play with the luminance but let me actually play that back in full length and you will see what the actual um, issues are with a scenario like this it might look that the surface is always the same but actually it's always transitioning between different levels of luminosity and reflections so it's not as easy as it seems so doing something like this uh, involves a lot of pain and a lot of rotoscoping. So uh, let's just hide these again, and um, let's show. Let me show you how this was done. So here's a mask, again roughly animated, and you have to click on subtract so to create the hole. Let me just enlarge the alpha expansion by a few pixels. Select edge blend as a fill method, and then generate fill layer. So you will see that the analyze process is way faster because it's just blending in pixels. The rendering process takes a little bit longer, but the analysis is very fast. So uh, let's fast forward a little bit. And it's done. So uh, let's check it out, how it looks like. And again, to no surprise, this is again amazingly good. It's almost unnoticeable. Maybe the grain should be there. There's a little bit of banding going on because again there's no no grain whatsoever so if you look at it very very closely you will see that this is a little bit of um, grain in there a little bit of noise but here it's a very smooth surface so you can really easily uh, get around this if you activate match grain for example and you choose the source and then you say final output and then again you tweak a little bit so it's not as intense and now let's check it out and the result is much better actually let me show you um, a version that I have tweaked a little bit and also uh, did a little bit of grading on top of that so uh, here it is looking very nice especially compared to how it looked before On to the next example, which is removing a complete person. Again, we have this guy here that is looking very familiar. And again, I have selected the area that I want to remove and I've drawn a really, really rough mask. So it's probably the worst, the worst roto that was ever done. Just making sure the person is covered all the way through. Then you have to click on subtract and then you will see that this is the hole that we have. And again, this is a moving camera and a moving subject, but there's a lot of information before and after because as the frame moves through, you will see that there's a couple of frames where 
Adobe Sensei, the technology, can see what was behind the person walking. So let's just go ahead and um, have a little bit of auth expansion, click on object, and let's generate the fill layer for this one. So let's speed up the process of analysis and rendering so we don't have to wait that long for the results. And here it is. So let's check out how it looks like. And again, the result is pretty amazing. Person completely gone. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It could be, let's say, 99% and then you can just fix a few frames that might be an issue manually. But overall, the result is pretty cool. And what can you do with this? Well, you can do really cool uh, effects of the person just disappearing. Uh, like in Ant-Man, for example, so you do that little shrinking effect, stuff like that. Uh, so it's a lot of fun and a lot of creative ways on how you can use that and how you can easily create a clean plate. All right, on to the next example. And for this one, uh, let's look at this beautiful clip. I bought this off Adobe stock and it features a nice little convertible driving down a coastal highway or road. And uh, it's a pretty clip and actually you can also follow along and if you download this as a preview so you you punch in this number here and then you will be able to download even a 4k preview of this clip and then you can uh, you can try this with the techniques that I'm going to show you so what has to be done for this clip well uh, you know the drill already so we selected this car with this with this mask and then we created a fill layer and then uh, this car is gone just like that. So that was pretty easy. But what about the second car? And um, we all know how clients and directors are. They always say like, well, I like this shot, but maybe can you remove this car? And you go like, yeah, of course. And then you find out, holy, how can I do this? Well, um, let me show you because Content Aware Fill works in a way that it's looking at frames before and after and sees what is behind the selected object it can then fill those areas in. But since we don't have a moving car here, uh, it cannot know what is beneath the car. So you need to help it a little bit. So what you can do is actually you can go to a frame and then select it just as you would with the normal procedure. Then you have to make sure that this one is set on subtract. And again, this is a roughly animated mask. Um, so we're just making sure that it's um, covered all the way through and then what you can do is you can click on create a reference frame So this will create a single frame that will be used as a reference Photoshop will be launched automatically and will open up an image that you can start working with so here's our reference frame in Photoshop and what you have to do is you have to create a separate layer and put this layer beneath it and then with the usual suspects of, of tools like the clone stamp tool and the patch tool, you can just go in and sample the areas and patch this area up and create something that is nice and clean. The important thing is not to mess up anything on the reference layer. So this is why you have to work on a separate layer that is beneath it. And um, so you have to make sure that all the edges here are covered as good as possible. And to save some time, I created this in Photoshop and uh, let's, uh, let's speed ramp here a little bit. So saving this and then going back to After Effects will give you the result. So going back to After Effects, I actually changed the frame because I did it at 10 seconds exactly. So this is the, the reference frame that I that I painted previously. Um, took me about six or seven minutes in Photoshop. So this is the reference frame if you solo it. This is how it looks like. And um, this is the uh, still the hole that we have. And you can use the reference frame on any, any position in your timeline. It can be on the first frame, it can be in the middle, you can even have multiple ones uh, depending on what you want to do. But all you have to do is then select the clip, make sure that this is the only only mask that is set on subtract so you can see the preview right here and then uh, you can set the alpha expansion the way you want we just keep it on zero in this case make sure object is selected and then you click on generate fill layer so with this again 
Adobe Content Aware Fill technology looks at what is uh, at the reference frame because this is what we want to have instead of the car and this will be then propagated um, to all the existing frames. So let's speed that up and check out the result. And here we are. So let's preview this and see how it looks like. Again, not as a surprise, I must say that the result is pretty sweet. And now you have the road completely cleaned of both of these cars. So you could use this, for example, in a completely different scenario, let's say for a title sequence um, or whatever uh, you want to do. So let's look at another example, which is dirt removal. So for example, you have a shot like this and uh, up there you have a little bit lens dirt or maybe also dirt on the sensor itself. So this results in a very blurred little uh, little blemish here that you want to get rid of and um, usually that again sounds like it's an easy task but with changing backgrounds and things passing passing over this little spot uh, things are not as easy as they seem so again what you have to do is you create a single mask and you don't have to move it because obviously it will not move and then you click on subtract and then you have to make sure that you select that area and then you click on surface or edge blend. Um, so let's try edge blend for this example. And we are fast forwarding again to see the results. And here we go. It looks good until it goes over the lamp pole here. So again, uh, really depends on what your, your clip has. So for example, if you only have blue skies, this would probably work. But in this case, this pretty much um, kills the result. So let's go ahead and select the area again and uh, let's try it out with a surface. And with surface you get a pretty good result and this actually fixes the blemish and it's perfectly gone. Again maybe you have to do some grain matching but in this case I think it looks pretty cool. Last but not least, let me also show you a few extra options that you have in the Content Aware Fill panel. Clicking on that icon here allows you to open up a few extra settings, for example, choosing the output depth and also the output location of your fills. And also you can change a few additional settings uh, right here, but uh, these are the extended settings for the Content Aware Fill feature. Okay, this is really, really awesome. I'm so happy that this exists and if I think back just a few years ago when I didn't have this technology, how much time I could have saved um, using this feature. Anyway, it's there now and I'm super happy. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you liked it. If you get some value out of it, let me know in the comments section uh, what you think. Hit the like button, hit subscribe and the bell icon if you want to get notified whenever there's a new video up from my end. And thank you so much again for watching and see you next time.